Boa tarde a todos. Dando continuidade, iniciamos a última parte da programação do nosso terceiro encontro científico do Programa de Pós-Graduação em Ciências em Saúde. Teremos agora a palestra intitulada Natural Carotenoids Compounds and Cancer Prevention, Chandler's and Perspectives, que será proferida pelo Dr. Shang Dong Wang, Senior Science and Director, Nutrition and Cancer Biology Labor Laboratory, USDA, Human Nutrition Research Center on, again at Tufts University and Professor of Biochem Biochemical and Molecular Nutrition at the Tufts University, uh, Friedman School of Nutrition and Policy, Boston, USA. A palestra será moderada pela professora doutora Ana Lúcia dos Anjos Ferreira, é, graduada em Medicina pela Universidade Estadual Júlio de Mesquita Filho, também doutorada em Fisiopatologia clínica, é, em, em Clínica Médica pela mesma instituição. Realizou pós-doutorado na Tufts University, em, em Boston, nos Estados Unidos. Atualmente é professora adjunta do Departamento de Clínica Médica da Faculdade de Medicina de Botucatu, F FMB, docente do Programa de Pós-Graduação em Fisiopatologia em Clínica Médica da FMB, Universidade Estadual Júlio de Mesquita Filho, Unesp Botucatu, São Paulo. Docente do curso de Pós-Nutrologia da Universidade de São Paulo, USP, em Ribeirão Preto. Agradecemos imensamente a participação do professor Xiang Dong Wang e da professora Ana Lúcia. Nesse momento, passo a palavra à professora Ana Lúcia para conduzir a sessão. A palavra é sua, professora Ana Lúcia. Muito obrigada, Carol, Caroline Baceto. Muito obrigada pela apresentação. Eu gostaria de agradecer o convite da Universidade Federal do Estado do Mato Grosso, né, do Programa de Pós-Graduação em Ciências da Saúde, e em especial a professora adjunto André Nascimento, que é o coordenador do terceiro encontro científico do Programa de Pós-Graduação em Ciência da Saúde, de Sinop. É um imenso prazer fazer parte da, desse encontro como moderadora. Uh, let me ask your permission, Xiang, to introduce you in Portuguese and then in English. Please do. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Xiang, Young é um ilustre professor, é médico graduado pela Universidade de Pequim, na China, fez o PhD, né, o, o doutorado e o pós-doutorado na Tufts University em Boston, no Ministério da Agricultura dos Estados Unidos, que é ligado à Tufts University, né, o, o, o centro de pesquisa se chama é, Centro de Pesquisa sobre Envelhecimento e Nutrição Humana, em 2005, ele se tornou um cientista sênior desse instituto de pesquisa e também um professor de bioquímica do Programa de Nutrição Molecular da Escola de Nutrição e Friedman, da, da Taft University. Atualmente, o, o professor Shang eh, Wang é diretor associado do Centro de, do HNRC né, e diretor do Laboratório de Biologia de, do Câncer e Nutrição. O professor é um cientista pesquisador, é um pesquisador, né, reconhecido internacionalmente no campo, no campo da nutrição, prevenção de doenças crônicas, com ênfase especial em componentes citoquímicos da dieta, por exemplo, os carotenoides e outros fa outros exógenos, fatores exógenos, como por exemplo, tabagismo, ingestão excessiva de álcool, dieta é, com alto teor de gordura e açúcar fatores que modificam as vias moleculares genéticas e que vão alterar o desenvolvimento do câncer, vão alterar para bem ou para mal. Né? O professor publicou mais de 140 artigos e revisões em periódicos de altíssimo impacto e também publicou vários capítulos de livro. Ele recebeu vários prêmios importantes de sociedades americanas e europeias ele está atualmente investigando os efeitos quimiopreventivos de nutrientes da dieta, como os fitoquímicos, carotenoides, retinoides, no desenvolvimento e na progressão do câncer. Ele vai apresentar, então, essa palestra, que em português é compostos carotenoides naturais, 
na prevenção do câncer, os desafios e as perspectivas, tá? Professor Shang Dong Wang, we are pleased to introduce uh, Shang Dong Wang. First of all, I thank you for accepting to be here today, Professor Shang. And I want to say it's an honor to have you at the third scientific meeting of a post-graduation program of a Federal University of Mato Grosso State in Sinop City. Dr. Shang Dong Wang is a medical doctor graduated by Peking University Medical College in Beijing, China, and a PhD by Taft University, Boston, USA. In 1992, he joined the faculty of uh, Jane Mayer, Uni United States Department of Agriculture, Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging at the Tufts University. In 2005, he became a senior scientist in HNRC and a professor in biochemistry molecular nutrition program at the Friedman School of Nutrition and Policy, Tufts University. Presently, Dr. Wang is Associate Center Director of HNRC and Director of the Nutrition and Cancer Biology Laboratory at HNRC Boston. Dr. Wang is an internationally well-recognized research scientist in the field of nutrition and chronic disease prevention with a special emphasis on how dietary cytochemicals components, for example, carotenoids and other exo exogenous factor, for example, cigarette smoking, alcohol intake, high fat, high sugar diet in the in development of the cancer. Dr. Wang has published more than 140 of manuscripts and reviews in journals with high impact factor and also published several book chapters. He received multiple awards from important American and European societies. And Dr. Wang is currently investigating the chemopreventive uh, effects of a dietary uh, nutrients such as phytochemical carotenoids and retinoids on cancer development and progress, progression. Please, Professor Xiang Dong Wang, you can start your presentation, Natural Carotenoids Compounds and Cancer prevent, prevents, Prevention, Challenge and Perspectives. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction, Anna. This is a very nice uh, uh, and uh, also, I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Andrew's invitation. Uh, you know, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, so uh, let me start my presentation. So Anna, you can see my presentation right now? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, great, okay. So um, uh, Andrew asked me a, a you know, uh, uh, give the presentation. A, a, now I realize, uh, you know, a lot of students uh, have, you know, the uh, research uh, interest in, in the cardiovascular disease. A, but my talk is going to be focused on, on cancer prevention. A, a, I want to just let you know, you know, in terms of molecular mechanism, you know, this uh, two uh, cancer and the cardiovascular disease shared a, you know, most of the, uh, you know, mechanism. So I uh, hope my talk uh, will help you uh, uh, a little bit. So they just give you a some background a, about the, uh, a, why we are interested in a uh, cancer prevention. And uh, here's a, uh, you know, they for American male, you know, uh, man, uh, they uh, the risk for lifetime to develop uh, a cancer is uh, one in two. In other words, it's a uh, one of the two of, of us will a uh, develop uh, cancer. And of course, this is just the average experience of the whole life, you know, a 
but they we know the life, uh, lifestyle change, you know, particularly like a cigarette smoker, you know, they can increase the lung cancer risk uh, dramatically. You know, uh, here I list the one in uh, uh, 15, it's just uh, uh, in the general, you know, the uh, population, a uh, male population. For a uh, woman and uh, for um, American female, you can see, you know, uh, this is not good either. It's a one a, in three uh, women will develop a, a, a cancer, a, such as breast cancer and lung cancer. So this is really, uh, it's a big problem for us because, uh, you know, we have to deal with the cancer in our whole life. So here is, uh, you know, the estimate a uh, cancer deaths uh, in the United States uh, 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 last year. You can see here almost uh, uh, 0.6 million Americans uh, dying uh, in the cancer. The leading cause of cancer deaths is uh, lung cancer for, a, for both men and women. And they, for men, prostate cancer, uh, you know, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, that's followed. For women, you know, they, after the lung cancer, it's breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, and the ovary cancers. So this is, uh, yeah, you know, as we know, you know, the uh, COVID-19 cause uh, in USA is 0.7 uh, 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 million people dead, you know, so this is almost same like uh, you know the uh, a uh, the cancer deaths. So that's why in this year you know the the average um, American uh, lifespan decreased uh, almost one year in general uh, uh, population. So they um, so they so that's uh, really emphasize the uh, you know the uh, cancer prevention is the key. The reason because uh, if you look at here. So this is a five years relative survival. Uh, so that means that people after the diagnosis of cancer, how, uh, after five years, how many people, patient will survive? Now you can see this is a three different period of time. Of course, the five years survival rate is increased and improved you know, from a, a early uh, 1970 uh, uh, to uh, to uh, 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 2015, and particularly like uh, you know the uh, prostate cancer or uh, breast cancer or skin cancer, you know that's the five years of rate is uh, you know a almost uh, uh, above uh, 90, but there are a couple of the cancer such as lung cancer and uh, pancreatic cancer. The five years survival rate is very poor. So that means after the five years, almost the 80 to 90 patient percent of patient dying. So that's the uh, a, uh, you know the um, the big problem. But fortunately, you know all this uh, cancer, you know almost the half one half of cancer can be modified risk. So you can see here. Uh, if you see this uh, a uh, uh, this chart, you can see here the tobacco smoke and uh, obesity or overweight almost uh, occupied the fifty percent of risk. So, in other words, is uh, if we really maintain health weight throughout our life and don't smoke or drink alcohol eat a healthy diet, and also doing more exercise, or we know our family uh, risk assessment, and don't get too much UV exposure, and also they follow the cancer screening program or use the preventive uh, medicine and the vaccine. So this can you know, help us decrease the cancer uh, uh, risk, that's at the personal action levels. Of course, at the population levels, we have to educate general public and the healthcare professional about the cancer prevention. So today I'm going to talk about the, you know, the uh, healthy diet. The, 
particularly I'm going to more focus on the carotenoids, not the here. So carotenoids is part of the, you know, a, a dietary uh, phytochemicals. I think they, most of you familiar with uh, all these uh, polyphenols, you know, uh, such as uh, phenolytic acid, flavonoids, and the cuquinoids, and the others. They contribute to anti-inflammation and anti-carcinogenic activities. And the carotenoid is part of it belong to a terpenoid because the chemical structure, such as the you know, beta carotene, beta cryptosanthine, lutein, lycopene, etc. So here is a, you know, they are just uh, for people they don't familiar with the carotenoids. I just highlight here, you know, carotenoids is a fat soluble, the pigment, you know, it's a lipophilic pigment. And they particularly like a yellow, orange pink or red color. It uh, exists widely in the plants and the insects, fish, and the bird, algae, and the yeast, and even bacteria. All right. So they have a very important biological function. And why they are why in the green leaves the vegetable, they also contain a lot of carotenoids because they have the uh, chromophore, which covered the color of the uh, uh, carotenoid. So they in the New England, uh, you know, the uh, uh, area such as Boston, you know, soon will uh, see those maple trees. They will become yellow and red. The reason because the chromophore degraded, so that's become uh, from the green become uh, red and. Uh, they first uh, isolate the carotenoids uh, actually is, uh, is from maple trees. But for human, we have to, we cannot synthesize the carotenoids. So we have to uh, get the, our carotenoids from our diet. That's what I, I list here. So major six carotenoids can be routinely detected uh, in our diet, such as beta carotene, alpha carotene, lycopene, zigzanthine, lutein, and the beta cryptosensing. So they, uh, this is just to uh, tell you, you know, the uh, uh, interesting stories, uh, you know, how this carotenoid can really reflect a, our dietary intake. And uh, this guy, you know, um, uh, uh, the, uh, you possible you know who's this guy, WXD, that's me. If you look at my plasma concentration, uh, of the carotenoid, that's the HPLC analysis. You can see the lutein, zigzanthine, beta cryptosanthine, alpha carotene, beta carotene, and the lycopene. And if you look at my postdoc, that's the Antonia, you know, from uh, Spam, you know, uh, if you look at his plasma concentration, you can see, you know, there is a huge amount lycopene. See, if you see the absorb uh, 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 unit, you can see the lycopene is very, very high, go to roof. The reason because, you know, when before he draw the blood from me, you know, I got a lot of V8 juice, that's, a, you know, vegetable juice, three days. So that's, a, you know, you can see a lot of carotenoids in my blood. But uh, this guy, Antonio, he got a lot of tomato juice. So that's why the lycopene is huge. So they, in terms of nutrition point of view, the carotenoids can be uh, divided into uh, either pro-vitamin A carotenoids, so that means those carotenoids can produce vitamin A. That's, uh, you know, I think most of you know already such as the alpha carotene and the uh, beta cryptosanthine and the beta carotene. The reason because the beta carotene is a symmetric molecule. You know, if they, there's two enzymes, one is called the beta carotene 15, 15 prime oxygen, so we call BCO1. They cleave at the central double bond, then they produce uh, vitamin A. Another enzyme they call the BCO2, they can cleave with this double bond, nine prime, 10 prime double bond, they produce apocarotenoids and apocarotenoids and further 
and more metabolized by BCO2 produce vitamin A. That's well documented. And the beta carotene is very, you know, the healthy to us. That's, uh, you know, based on the IP study. And uh, also the, a lot of observational study have uh, consistently demonstrated that uh, if we consume more fruit and vegetable rich in carotenoids such as beta carotene have lower risk of uh, cancer such as lung cancer and other chronic disease. Um, like uh, the cardiovascular disease, you know, macro degeneration uh, and osteoporosis, you know, uh, and the inflammation uh, disease. However, there are two larger clinical trials. They give beta carotene supplement 20 to 30 milligram per day. And the results is a surprise to everybody. They are not a decreased the cancer risk but increased incidence of lung cancer and also the mortality in the smokers. This is two study I just want to show you. They published in New England Journal of Medicine and the uh, 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 GNCI. You can see after six years of supplementation given beta carotene, there was the 18% increase lung cancer in the group given the beta carotene. Then the CARES study, you know, that's a, the, the ATPC study that's conducted in the Finland and the CARES study is conducted in, U, in USA. They got the same outcome. The beta carotene group, they got the 28% increase lung cancer rather than decrease. So this is a problem because, uh, you know, it's the it's unexpected results. And what happened is uh, still we don't know exactly mechanism, but the most possible mechanism is due to dosage. Remember, I mentioned it's 20 to 20 to a 30 milligram beta carotene per day. And in the USA, the average intake of beta carotene only two milligram. And then that's the in-hand study. You can see the plasma concentration and you can see it's uh, less than one micromole concentration. But in the CARE study and the ATPC study, you can see it's a three or four times or even five times increase the plasma concentration. The Linxian trial, Linxian trial is done in, in China. And in that population, because they have malnutrition and you know the baseline is very low. So they see that give the 15 milligram beta carotene, they see protective effect. Age-related eye disease uh, a, a study one and two, they give 15 milligram beta carotene a but the concentration, you can plasma concentration is still lower. So that's they did not see any harmful effect. So this tells us, you know, they're very important that when we're doing this study, we have to think about the dosage all the time. If we uh, really want to study physiological dose that's from our diet, you know, that's different. When you give pharmacological dose, that's high dose uh, of uh, beta carotene. So I summarize this, uh, uh, a, you know, the uh, a study uh, in the previous publication. If you have time, you can look at that. Doesn't mean that at the low dose of carotenoid, we know carotenoid is antioxidant. They have a photoprotection effect and the carotene metabolites such as vitamin A or others, they can have a number of biological function. They can activate uh, the nuclear receptor, they have anti-inflammation, anti-angiogenesis effect. They can regulate cell proliferation and induce apoptosis and induction cell deflation. And also they can induce phase two detoxification and antioxidant enzyme. Also they can in enhance immune function and enhance gap junction communication. However, if you give too much beta carotene or carotenoid, particularly if uh, people smoke and drink too much alcohol, then the carotenoid is possible 
will become pro-oxidant fat, and they can enhance, they activate the pro-carcinogen to carcinogen, interfere with vitamin metabolism, and also induce oxidative stress. So this is a very important message for us because uh, again, it's a dose dependent effect. So the, another question is, uh, you know, beta carotene may not be uh, beneficial to uh, lung cancer. And uh, how about other, uh, other carotenoids uh, uh, exist in, in from our diet, like, uh, you know, the uh, 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 vegetable. So then there is a study come out uh, from Harvard uh, Public Health. You know, they, 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 what they did, they pulled out the seven cohorts study together in the uh, North American and the Europe, uh, uh, European. And here's the seven, you know, the total uh, uh, cohort study. They put all these uh, prominent primary data together and reanalyze. What they found is, in terms of the carotenoids and the lung cancer, there is no effect of alpha carotene and the beta carotene, but the beta cryptosensing, that's a significant reduce lung cancer risk. And other like lutein or lycopene is marginal. You can see the p-value is 0.06 or 0.28. So they, then once we hear this study, we say, oh, you know, in that case, oh, there is another, you know, couple of papers show, yes, in the Asian population, beta cryptosensing has significantly uh, lower risk of lung cancer, and the other carotenoids of even vitamin A and vitamin E and folate are not, were not associated. And also the Shanghai cohort study also show the same thing. And in a, a meta-analysis, the inverse association, association between beta cryptosensing intake and lung cancer was the strongest among the specific carotenoids uh, exam. And then in USA, they call the enhanced uh, survey study. They also show the high serial level of the beta cryptosensing is associated with low risk of lung cancer in the current smoke. So once we hear this, we say, okay, let's do some you know, animal study. So what are the animal study we use is, uh, we use the AGMI, which is lung cancer model. Okay, we give the NK, that's the carcinogen uh, induced lung cancer. And they also can bind to the nicotine receptor, uh, a, a alpha seven specific uh, subtype. And you can see this is lung and there's a lot of tumor there. And this is um, on the microscope, you can see very clear it's uh, adenocarcinoma. And uh, you can see the number of the tumor and it's a significant decrease when you give beta cryptosensing, like uh, the low dose and the high dose. Again, this is dose is relatively lower and uh, mimic the dietary intake from our vegetable. And also you can see the alpha uh, seven receptor, that's nicotine receptor, is overexpressed in the tumor and also in the uh, epithelial cell in the trunk here, but decreased both microRNA and also uh, the uh, mRNA and also the protein level, decreased by beta cryptosensing. And the AKT phosphorylation is decreased and the bad phosphorylator is deep. That means they can induce uh, apoptosis. So that's the show that beta cryptosensing has unique function. They can, uh, you know, target the alpha seven receptor, and particularly because they smoke uh, contain nicotine or NK that's carcinogen in the from smoke, they can activate this receptor. Then they activate all this downstream event particularly involve proliferation, adipose inflammation, and angiogenesis, and enhanced tumor genesis. So how do you know that beta cryptosensing is specific target alpha-7 receptor? So what we did, we did a cell culture study. So what do we use? We use the alpha-7 receptor antagonist. So that means they can decrease, you can see here, they can decrease the protein level of alpha-7, 
Now we compare with different dose of beta glucosamine. Now you can see at the full maximum molar concentration beta glucosamine also decreased up seven. So that's the similar like uh, the uh, MG624, uh, uh, that's the alpha 7 receptor antagonist. And uh, we, are, we also use the, a, 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 a look at the downstream, yes, it's correlated with uh, the, uh, the alpha 7 receptor uh, protein levels. And then we use the alpha 7 nicotine receptor activator, you know, PUN, PNU. Now you can see here that PNU will upregulate the alpha 7 receptor, but when you give PNU and the beta cryptosensing, you can see the alpha 7 is decreased. So that's clear show the beta cryptosensing can specific target the alpha 7 receptor. So again, you know, we, uh, we studied MMP. Two, that's involved the cell inva uh, invasion. And, uh, and you can see here, you know, when you use the uh, alpha-7 activate, they can increase the MMP4-2, but decrease by BCX, beta cryptosensing we call BCX. And again, use the activate, you can see here, MMP2 increased, but decreased by uh, a, a uh, beta creep sensing and also the uh, uh, MG, that's the antagonist. So that's a support. Uh, I'll, I'll say uh, we also uh, 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 use two different cell lines because, uh, you know, uh, like uh, the uh, uh, lung cancer, they, they, they show the alpha 7 uh, receptors is positive. But when we use the uh, uh, alpha 7 uh, nicotine receptor negative cell line, such as MDA, breast cancer cell, and uh, another uh, kidney cell, you can see there's no effect. So that's a clear show. Again, the alpha-7, uh, the uh, beta sensing can attack alpha-7 uh, positive for uh, cancer cell. So, they, uh, so this is summary. This one, a, a, a part of a study is, uh, you know, beta sensing is unique compared with the beta uh, carotene, they can attack a, a target of a seven receptors, and then they block uh, PSV kinase AKT pathway, and also they inhibit cell migration and uh, angiogenesis. So the why, uh, you know, how this BCX uh, can regulate alpha seven nucleotide receptors still unknown. So they, what we did is uh, we just checked the, you know, because of the, uh, the early dose response one, that's the transcription factor for the alpha-7 uh, receptor, then we see that beta sensing can decrease uh, the uh, EGR-1 uh, expression. So possible, that's a mechanism because of the BCX can regulate uh, 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 EGR-1. Uh, uh, transcription factor. There. Therefore, don't regulate the alpha-7 nicotine receptor. But the interesting is uh, when we look at the plasma concentration and the lung or liver concentration of vitamin A, there's not much change. Remember, I, as I mentioned before, the beta sensing is a precursor of the vitamin A. So if you use Think the beta carotene. Beta carotene is also what I mean, a precursor. Why beta carotene not working? Beta cryptosensing worker uh, working because both are pro what I mean, a carotenoids, right? But when we look at you know what I mean, a level or rating pump that's both what I mean, a, there's not much change there. So that suggests beta cryptosensing may have a unique function. All this protective effect may not be through the vitamin A mediate function. So how can we study this one? So we know beta sensing can be cleaved by BCO1 or BCO2 produce vitamin A. You know, that's a well document. So what we did, we use a, we use a different animal model. What we did, we knock out both BCO1 and the BCO2 enzyme. 
So there is no any conversion of beta cryptosensing to vitamin A. Now, when we knock out these two enzymes, when we give BC beta cryptosensing, now you can see here the animal become totally yellow. Not I as mentioned before, BCX is a pigment. It's a yellow pigment. So that's why they can accumulate dramatically in their body because we knock out both enzymes. So there is no any conversion. So that's why the animal can accumulate the BCX uh, significantly. Then we said, okay, this is a good model for us to study. So because if we try to figure out whether or not it's due to vitamin A or due to beta cryptosensing itself. So we, let's use this model and study. So what we did, we used this uh, model and put the animal into smoking chamber and use the white type and the double knockout. Double knockout means uh, both BCO1 and the BCO2. Both genes knock out. Okay, so there's no any con conversion or cleavage uh, beta creep sensing. You can see here, you know, when you knock out, there is a dramatic increase in the BCX accumulation. That's uh, no surprise. All okay. right. And uh, in the uh, Y type, you know, the animal, then when you give BCX, there is increased vitamin A. That's uh, you can see. Here, that's a volume A rating not increase. It's good. That means the model is working very well. Now, when we look at the information response in the uh, 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 by cigarette smoke, so what we did, we put both white type and the double knock mice and put it into smoking chamber. And after a certain time, then we look at the long. Uh, macrophage accumulation and the neutrophil accumulation in the lung. Now you can see, of course, when you give a cigarette smoke, that's a CS, that means cigarette smoke exposure, there is a significant increase macrophage and the neutrophil accumulation. However, when you give beta uh, cryptosensing, then both macrophage and uh, uh, neutrophil accumulation in both Y type and the double nuclear mice both decrease. All right, there's no any difference, but uh, as long as you give the BCX, it's decreasing information. Now, if you look at the uh, uh, available uh, L space enlargement, you can see that after cigarette smoke in the lung, it's become, you know, the uh, available become larger. And you can see again, give cigarette smoke, increase the, uh, the uh, available uh, L space, but decreased by BCX. And we also looked at some, you know, the uh, a, a hypoplasma epithelia, you can see here also increase and decrease regardless uh, the genotyping, you know, uh, either Y type or double knockout. So that's a show the BCX or beta cryptosensing, they have anti-inflammation. All right, it's not related to vitamin A. So they, so they, in order to demonstrate that one, said, okay, because uh, you know beta cryptosan has anti-inflammation, let's uh, use the different uh, 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 like uh, the uh, carotene noise. Uh, it's non-pro vitamin A carotene, such as lycopene. You can see here. This is just highlight the um, our paper uh, because of time. I'm not going to go to detail, but uh, the non-pro vitamin A carotene noise, such as lycopene also inhibit cigarette smoke-induced chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and some precancer lesions. And very interesting is that lycopene can upregulate some major key gene related to reverse cholesterol transport, and uh, which were downregulated by cigarette smoke, and, uh, but when you give lycopene, they can restore the normal cholesterol level content in single blood. No normal. Therefore, they can decrease the inflammation. So if you want to see the detail, you can see this paper. And uh, they will also see the lycopene. You know, this is non-pro-vitamin A carotenoids also can 
inhibit cigarette smoke, induce the bad liver, and uh, uh, we call the cell hepatitis inflammation in the liver. And one of the uh, mechanisms because the lycopene can induce the antioxidant enzyme. Then they further decrease the oxidative stress and they inhibit uh, inflammation. Again, this paper published, uh, you, you can take a look uh, if you want to know the details. So they, you know, so far we talk about the lung, you know, lung cancer. How about the other cancers? So today I'm going to uh, uh, also mention some of our recent study in the liver cancer. We know that if we have what they call a high sugar diet or high refined carbohydrate diet, I list it here, you can see, you know, a soft drink, uh, you know, particularly has, uh, contain a lot of sugar, and the, and the junk food, you know, donuts, all this a, a refined carbohydrate can increase obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, non-alcohol fat liver disease, of course, some cancer. I'm very interested in the liver cancer. The reason because in the liver cancer in USA, it's increased in the past 25 years. So what we did, we said, oh, you know, let's study this one and see the beta sensing effect. So again, we use white type animal, and we also use the BCO1, BCO2 double knocker mice, and we give a, a specific carcinogen that's induced liver cancer, we call the uh, dino, uh, uh, nitrosamine, and they inject it, and then we give a sugar diet. And after a certain time, uh, I think the 24 weeks, and give the either high sugar diet with or without BCX supplementation, then we take a look and see what happened. And you can see here, that's a liver, that's a tumor. In the high sugar fat animal, there's a lot of tumor, large tumor, you can see here. And when you give high sugar plus beta sensing, you can see small tumor and a much less tumor. And this is on the microscope. And here's the data. You can see tumor instance is decreased when you give a BCX and the tumor number is decreased in both white type and the double knock out mice. And this is the average tumor size. You know, the, how big is the tumor? You know, like this. Now you can see the decrease in both type, pi, uh, white type and the double knock out mice. And also we look at the fatty liver again, when you give a BCX, fatty liver decrease in both white type and the double knocker. So this really tells us, you know, possible, again, in the different animal model or, or different cancer, BCX have, you know, biological protective effect. So what's mechanism? How this mechanism related to the BCX and high sugar diet in terms of tumor genesis? So we know we like sugar. We you know we eat we like the sweet and the cake. You know, uh, uh, particularly in our birthday. You know, right? But so do cancer cells. They also like the sugar. So that's the a Dr. Uh, uh, Werber. You know, he he got the uh, Nobel Prize in the 1931 because. What he found is in the tumor cell, the transformed cell, they have, a, they have a re uh, program, metabolic reprogram. What they, the tumor cell is that they like sugar. They increase the glucose transport. At the same time, they increase uh, 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 lactase dehydrogenase, which convert pyruvate to a lactase. And regardless the, the, in the presence of a, uh, 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 a oxygen, so this enhanced the glycolysis and really increased the tumor growth and tumor migration, metastasis, and the and the immunosuppression. All right, so this is well documented. And so that's why a lot of, uh, you know, the scientists try to find an inhib inhibit of glycolysis and which by target either glucose transport and the lactose dehydrogenase A, we call LDHA, if they block transport or block this enzyme, so 
there's a less day lactase and less energy for the tumor. So tumor can decrease. All right. So this is uh, you know the a, a area the people a, in the cancer field they study. So then we say, oh, how about the carotenoid beta quibisensin? All right. So this beta quibisensin can when not they can decrease the glucose transport or they can inhibit LDH. Therefore, they can, can help us explain why, how this beta quibisensin can decrease the cell uh, tumor genesis, particularly you know, uh, tumor growth. So here's the data. What we found is, this is summary. You can see when we give beta quibisensin in both Y type and the double knot eye mice, they can decrease the P53 acylate. We know the uh, P53 acylate is the active form. So that means they have a P53 tumor suppressor function. And we know P53 can inhibit the uh, hypoxia uh, 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 induced factor alpha uh, one and also the LDHA. So that's possible how this beta sensing can inhibit tumor growth. You can see data, yes, again, this is the isolated P53, it's the active form. When you give BCX, it's an increase, and uh, HIF1 alpha is decreased, and uh, um, the, uh, this is ratio, this is just total uh, uh, P53 and the uh, isolated P53 is increased. And you can see LDHA, correlate with the uh, uh, HIP-1 alpha is decreased in both Y type and uh, double non-commerce. So this is really help us explain, you know, why this tumor is decreased. Possible because the beta quibisensin can activate P53 tumor suppressor and inhibit HIP-1 alpha and also inhibit LDHA. Then they block the lactase uh, production, therefore decrease the uh, tumor genesis. And we did not see the uh, BCX can inhibit the glucose uh, transport, but the LDH, it seems like a major pathway. So therefore we just uh, say in the, in the possible BCX can stop the tumor cell and the tumor, if the starvation, the tumor cell will not Growth. So they, um, I still have a couple minutes. I'm uh, just uh, very briefly mention the tomato and the lycopene. You know because lycopene is the same like uh, uh, BCX. Uh, it can cleave it by uh, two enzymes, but remember they are not pro vitamin A carotene. They are not produce vitamin, A, but they did produce a number of other compounds. And the recent study will show that this compound also biological. Uh, active. Uh, if you search, they uh, are uh, doing the literature uh, uh, search. You can see the all the publication from my lab in the past. So they, here's a highlight. One of the a uh, a uh, 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 study we really feel it's important to to highlight here and to let you know is uh, you know tomato. So what we did we yes, lycopene is protective, but they you know they. We all eat the tomato or tomato juice. So we, we drink uh, tomato juice. So we, we eat pizza, pasta, you know, the uh, spaghetti. We put the uh, tomato sauce there. You know, we eat, uh, we are not eating lycopene, but we eat the tomato, right? So the question is whether or not the tomato is protective. So what we did, we use the, you know, the uh, knockout mice and, uh, you know, we give the tomato. And what we found is tomato supplementation. They can also modify the gut microbiome. They can increase the microbiota richness and certain bacteria decrease. And also tomato can increase the adiponectin production and the inflammatory cytokine. I should mention, you know, the previous uh, Anna and uh, Hinata, uh, you know, they, they demonstrated the uh, lycopene actually they, uh, they uh, they give a tomato of, uh, a also, and they show that adiponectin increase. So we know that adiponectin is protective liver. 
So that's they uh, they can decrease the uh, uh, fatty liver uh, disease. So the question is for us is uh, how about the a, uh, a liver cancer? You know, uh, so what we did we use uh, uh, double knocker mice and give carcinogen and produce liver uh, tumor and also we give a tomato powder. So what we found tomato powder can decrease the fat liver. You can see here that's also fat uh, accumulated in the liver and it's decreased by tomato powder. And also there is some uh, gene related to the uh, bad liver. You can see they can actually tomato can increase uh, uh, the uh, AMPK phosphorylation and the increase the fatty acid oxidation, decrease fatty acid uptake and uh, decrease uh, 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 triglyceride uh, synthesis. So how about inflammation? You can see again, they can decrease the inflammation for side and uh, almost 89% that's the inflammation foresight infiltration you can see here. And also they can uh, 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 decrease the N uh, 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 NF-kappa B uh, uh, activation uh, by tomato uh, powder. And, uh, such, uh, and also the inflammation system such as TNF-alpha uh, L6. So this is uh, a uh, inflammation also decreased by tomato and how about the tumor? And you can see here, that's the tumor induced by the dam, that's a carcinogen. A, and we give also a, a, a give high fat diet and promote. And when you give a carcinogen high fat diet and a plus tomato powder, you can see the, there's a very little tumor uh, in the liver. You can see the tumor instance decrease, tumor numbers decrease, and the tumor volume also decreased by tomato powder. So, and also again, you know, we did see the tomato powder feeding and increase, uh, increase the micro, uh, the uh, richness and the diversity as compared with the high fat uh, diet feeding alone group. We haven't identified the specific bacteria yet, uh, uh, but we are uh, doing uh, that uh, right now. So in summary, so I think the take home message is, uh, you know, when we think about the protection of the carotenoids, we have to keep in mind, uh, keep in mind all the time, it's really those dependent. And uh, we, uh, I present a lot of data involved the biological functions uh, uh, about the carotenoids and uh, hopefully, you know, you are interested in the uh, uh, study, the carotenoids and uh, uh, cancer prevention. So they finally, I really want to acknowledge all my peoples in the past and the current in working in my lab. You know, they, I, I'm not going to mention individual and my collaborations and my funding. And, but I want to particularly mention, uh, you know, I have a fortune to have a, a five of excellent research scientists uh, from Brazil, uh, that I list the uh, uh, name here, and uh, they really did a good job uh, uh, in the Boston and uh, contribute uh, a lot to my uh, talk. And uh, I would like to thank them uh, all in here. So finally, thank you for uh, listening, and I hope you can visit Boston. It's a beautiful city. Uh, you can see here, that's our research center for nutrition uh, research center in Boston. Uh, you know, uh, hope we see you guys here. That's the previous all the uh, scientists from the, uh, you know from Brazil working uh, with me. Okay, thank you. So I would like to uh, take any question you would like. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shang. Thank you. Okay, let me get rid of this one. Thank you so much for your wonderful lecture, amazing results. You, you talk a lot, uh, several, several points, and uh, I really like it the, the, to see cryptoshantin and the lycopene 
in the cancer or steatosis, inflammation and cancer prevention. We can say we can say prevention because you 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 showed a lot of our data. But uh, let me ask, for example, the practical things. For example, crypto shunting that we can find in the several vegetable, green vegetables or yellow. And the, uh, the milligram that you gave was about 20 milligrams per, uh, per no, animal it's, kilo. No, it's a 0.8 milligram, 0.8 milligram. The 20 yeah. milligram, yeah, 0.8 milligram. Okay. You know, point, okay. uh, uh, 0 0.8 milligram. A uh, 20 milligram, point. that's yeah, 20 milligram, that's beta carotene time. They give 20 milligram, that's too high. And we yes. only, yeah, we only give 0.8. Yeah. Point, point 0.8. Yeah. So the, can, you, can yeah. you say, for example, the equivalence for our diet or is too hard? No, we can take that. Yeah. Okay, good question, Anna. You know, so this is a very important uh, information because when we select a dosage, we try to equivalent how much we can eat or get it from the diet. So this dose, 0 0.8 milligram equivalent, if you eat one and a half tangerine, or you like the three middle side sweet red pepper. One and a half tangerine? Yeah. And what? And the three middle side red pepper, sweet red pepper. Okay, like a bell shape, bell shape, the red pepper. So another question. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, this is really uh, primar primary question. Cryptoshantin depend on uh, heating to, to get more available or not? Like lycopene, for example. If you heat lycopene, you get the isomerization and you is more available. Cryptoshantin is the same? Well, the lycopene, because uh, when you're heating or you're know, cooking, the they lycopene will undergo isomerization. So when they cause a all transform become cis, isomer, it's much easier to get absorbed. All right, so that's lycopene. Beta cryptosantin is biological, very well uh, available. Because the people, they study beta carotene and beta cryptosantin, then they found beta cryptosantin much easier to get into the body than beta carotene. Without heating. Without heating. So that means if you yeah if you eat if you eat you know tangerine if you eat a, a, a sweet red pepper uh, I don't know if you guys eat the uh, butternut squash you know pumpkin butternut squash they contain a lot of beta cryptosantin there you, they can get into the body and uh, the plasma concentration go up. And the equivalence of a lycopene 20 milligrams, can you, can you tell us? Yeah, uh, lycopene, what we give uh, is uh, equivalent to 10 milligram uh, uh, lycopene per day. Okay, 10 milligram, uh, you know the tomato uh, juice, that one can, if you fly, a, you know, they do not fly, they, they give you one kind of tomato juice, which contain 100 milligram. <laughs> Just a small time, you know. So 10 milligram lycopene, that's a, you know, you can get it from, uh, yeah, you know, a two or three medium sized tomato. You can get it. Yeah, it's easy, uh, much easier to get it, that one. Yeah, it's like I showed the Antonis data, you know, because he drink the tomato juice. <laughs> so yes. that's in the plasma concentration is, uh, you know, very high. So it's important to, to, to say that is the, the period that you give the, the, the carotenoids is important too, because PHS 
uh, the, the lung cancer PHAS study gave uh, 50 milligrams per uh, for hu human, and the, uh, and the nothing happened. But they 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 say they gave it today. Take tomorrow, no, and then alternate alternate dates. I think that's important to say that too. Yes, yes. About beta carotene and lung cancer. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, they, that's a physician health study. They give 15 milligram uh, beta carotene every, every other day. You know, that's a take a term. And they every did other not, day, yes. Yeah, at, at other day. So they did not see a harmful effect. Uh, but remember, in the physician health study, uh, the only 11% was cigarette smoker. In another words, is the ATP study and the care study, they are smoker. You know, they, this is very important because they, in terms of smoker, they have a lot of oxidative, uh, you know, the stress in their lung, you know, the free radicals there. So when you give beta carotene, it's a fat soluble, the beta carotene can accumulate in the lung. So if they have this, uh, you know, the uh, free radical and the beta carotene huge amount, the beta carotene will possibly become pro oxidant they can cause more, even more damage. So that's a possible why particularly give high dose, you know, high dose. So this is a very important is a, is a dose and how, and also form, you know, remember all this uh, uh, beta curtain trial, they give a pill. Not like us, you know, we eat the carrots, you know, we eat the, uh, you know, vegetable, you know, that's the natural, Fire. yes, natural product you know, from a vegetable and fruit, rather than synthetic compound, you know, produce, you know, they, uh, for the pill, a supplementation. So this is uh, another, you know, uh, uh, point. Yeah, thank you to raise this one. And, uh, one question is, uh, the carotenoids combination, for example, if you give it lycopene and beta cryptosantin together, would it be more effective uh, than a single carotenoids? Yes, this is a wonderful question because uh, as a nutritionist, we always encourage people get the carotenoids from a diet, you know. So this BCX, the beta cryptosantin has a unique function. Lycopene possible have uh, anti-inflammation or other function, antioxidant function. So if you combine possible you will have a synergenic effect, all right? So, so far, I haven't seen any people study beta carotene alone, lycopene alone, and the combination possible. That's one of the future study, you know, uh, uh, we should do, yeah. But in, at this moment, what we really want to encourage people is from diet, because in the, from diet, that's combination. That's, you know. Natural. Yes, and then there's a lot of others like vitamin E or you know vitamin C. Uh, there, you know, a, and it's a, a safe. You know, we are not really worried about the uh, interaction. You know, uh, with uh, a, a smoke. You know, exposure. So uh, I'm not sorry. Yeah, go you ahead. Can talk. Okay. No, 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 no another I... another question that I I want to say now is. Uh, for cryptosantin, of course, the carotenoids need the oil for to, to give the micelle. Okay, uh, why do I take a red pepper or tangerine? I don't need to worry about the to take oil together. So that's the uh, one of the studies show. Uh, you know, they in terms of. Uh, Carotenoid absorption, yes, they, some uh, fat is essential, it's important, but you really don't need much, the fat. You know, they, even the salad dressing, you know, there's, a, you know, they, a not much uh, fat there, they still get it uh, absorbed. The reason because, uh, you know, we have this, uh, fat, uh, uh, you know, uh, bioacid, uh, you know, and uh, 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 liver, uh, uh, you know, recirculation, that's to help uh, form the myocell and get uh, the carotenoids uh, into the body. Yeah. 
So the Fed may help, but it's not a, uh, a uh, how to say, uh, we don't need much, not, we don't need a lot of Fed to get the carotenoid absorbed. Yeah. As long as you have some certain fat in the, in the regular diet, you know, that's fine. But the key is you increase the carotenoids concentration. That can help you get it or get it absorbed. Okay. Thank you. We have a, uh, in the chat, you can see, you can see in the chat, we know that the animal models are very important to science. However, today people see, seem to want to only apply the science to human directly. Do you feel that? Well, this is a great question. All right, so that's, a, you know, the, a particularly as a student to our postdoc here. So we have to keep in mind all the time, you know, animal is animal, human is human. All right, so particularly in terms of study the carotenoid, you know, human is different. When we eat the carotenoids, the carotenoids can get convert to vitamin A, but at the same time, they can also get absorbed intact into the body. So that's why sometimes we eat a lot of carotenoids, our skin become yellow, right? That's human. So that's the, you know, the one I was in a medical school and my teacher asked me if the, the kids with yellow eye and yellow face coming in and what's the first in, impression? I said, jaundice, liver disease. Then my teacher said, no, you have to ask how much carrots, you know, the, uh, his parents uh, gave to him. You know, if they eat a lot of carrots, the skin become yellow. But an animal like a mouse model, like uh, mice or rat, they are they cannot absorb a lot unless you give high dose. Unless you give high dose carotenoids, then they can get in. So that's you know we still use the mice and rats uh, a study. So now because they cannot absorb much, right? So that's why we use the double knockout mice. We use the knockout those cleavage enzyme. Then you can see I show the data that animal become yellow. So that can mimic human. So that's one of the reasons why we use the double knockout mice and try to you know, uh, represent a human situation. But this is again, you know, a, uh, a important information. So they, um, there are three animal models uh, a, a can be used uh, to mimic a, a carotenoid absorption. You know, one is a monkey, you know, monkey. Uh, one is a, a calf, you know, small calf, you know, calf. And one is a ferret, you know. So that's a, what, uh, two people I show you, I, we use a ferret uh, a, as an animal model because a ferret is not a rodent. Ferret is a, uh, is a carnivore. They eat meat, you know, uh, not animal species like a bear, you know, uh, all this, uh, this. They absorb carotenoids a lot. So that's the, you know, they, uh, uh, you don't need to do knockout mice. Uh, you, uh, you don't need to knock out the enzyme. You just give them carotenoids uh, a lot. Then the ferret become yellow. So that's why we use the ferret as model. So I think the question is very important is uh, because uh, every time when we think about the specific research question, we have to think about whether or not this animal model is the right choice. Whether or not all this uh, outcome we saw is can reflect human situation. Of course, you know, I'm rather to do the human study uh, right away. But uh, you know the human study also have a limitation because if you want to study uh, cigarette smoke and the beta creeper sensing, and uh, you are worried about if they you know same outcome like a beta coating, then you really have a you know problem. So so there's a lot of uh, limitation. But uh, you know once we build up a lot of data from an animal study, then we we feel confident uh, confident say okay. Beta keratin and the beta it could be different. So let's move to human trial. 
Okay. Wonderful answer. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, is there less money to basic research along the years, for example, in our research field or continue increase? This is the second part of uh, Andre question. Yes, you know, I, I, I think it's everywhere. It's not only just the, uh, you know, USA. I, I, I believe in Brazil, the same situation. You know, funding agents right now, it's uh, because they, they move a lot of money to more focus on, you know, the uh, coronavirus, you know, uh, COVID-19. Uh, so they, you know, they are not limited to the funding. So they, for us, the basic research, uh, you know, it's very difficult. To get it right now, and very competitive uh, in in USA uh, as well. Particularly when we dealing with uh, a cancer prevention, because uh, you know the people still have this concept is uh, cancer treatment. You know because these people get the cancer. What we are going to do? We have modernized technology. We have modernized and uh, uh, you know a, a uh, knowledge, and we have uh, uh, you know the uh, very good method to uh, a very good chemo uh, uh, therapy drug, so we can do this. But they forgot. Once the patient has cancer, you know they will die. They will die. So they whatever you give those drugs is is too late. So why not to spend more money and give more funding for the prevention? But the people still not realize that why you you know so so that's why. Uh, sometimes for us, it's hard to get the uh, uh, research funding because, uh, you know, then they say, oh, this is just a prevention, you know, whether not it's effective like a drug, you know, they, 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 they don't uh, feel this is a uh, priority. So that's, uh, uh, you know, they, we, we try to uh, uh, put this new concept, uh, new concept, that's not new concept, it's old concept, but uh, emphasize prevention, prevention, prevention is uh, so important rather than, you know, they have a disease. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, uh, regardless if it's a cancer or cardiovascular disease or others, you know, we always have to think about the early prevention uh, rather than just the late uh, treatment. Thank you. Uh, do you have a currently uh, students from another country in your laboratory? No, they are um, th this year because we uh, our uh, uh, research center shut down, so there's no any international student. So they, I have uh, a three student. They got the uh, funding from their country already. The forty funded, they couldn't come. So they uh, uh, they they just postponed to next year, next September. But uh, but the the problem is for students because they are going to graduate soon. They cannot wait another year. You know, I suppose they, they should come to last year. They couldn't come. Then they postponed to this year. They couldn't come either. So then they said, oh, you know, I'm going to try next year. But uh, next year, they all, all these students graduate. And the postdoc, they finished the postdoc training already. So they cannot go to USA, uh, you know, in, in that time. So, so uh, you know, so that's, a, uh, you know, we have a problem uh, right now. And I hope next year, you know, uh, the situation will, you know, improve and uh, we will have uh, some international students or, or, or postdoc uh, to come to Boston to study. Wonderful. And the, the... Do you need uh, any spe specific vaccination, for example, modern, modern Pfizer, JJ? Which vaccine USA uh, ask to to students to to take to get in in the center? Yeah, I for for us. Do you know that? Yeah, for, for us, you know, in in, US, in USA, three uh, vaccines, all are good. You know, so as long as you get you, you vaccinated, it's fine in the USA. As long as you vaccinate, you know, vaccinated, you know, if you are not vaccinated, that's uh, going to be a problem, you know, uh, because right now we have to take it. 
uh, uh, test weekly. You know, every uh, week we have to take uh, one test at least. You know, some uh, students need to take two or three even. Uh, so, and also they, you have to show them, you know, vaccination uh, certificate. For the international, uh, tell the truth, I don't know. The reason because, uh, you know, it's different. For example, if the student from China, when not that vaccination is validated, you know, they, they put a question uh, there. So I, so they um, not one have to involve the, you know, the uh, international uh, student office, you know, they, uh, so they will make decision where not to, they can issue the visa application uh, to the individual. Thank you. This is not related to your lecture, but it's important to, to us to send our students to your laboratory. Okay, thank you. And Andrea, do you want to, to ask more or Caroline or other question? Professor Andrea? Andrea Nascimento? Hi, Ayana Hasha. Hi. Hello. Let, let me ask you. I'm going. Hasha. Yes. It's a pleasure. Hey. To be here. Thank you. Our presentation. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, 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 let me ask you, Sean. Sean, when I uh, can attend, I were in 2009. I remember you have a, a gap uh, related with money. I remember it was in basic research, and in that, that time, many people don't have money because uh, the Asians uh, ask more transnational. This, uh, this, this mind change, or it's, it's hard to. to to get money for basically. It's the same as similar question, but I have a, I, I remember that time you uh, you had a gap for money. Now it's better for you. Uh, it's improved your lab with money. Hey, yeah, they uh, Andrew, that's the uh, you know they are very difficult as a uh, you know they uh, uh, to answer the reason because uh, Yes, they uh, uh, right now the NH when they look uh, look in the grant application, they are not only just uh, focus on the basic research. What they ask is uh, you have a cell culture study, you have an animal study, you also have some component of human study. So that's make the application more strong than you only just do cell culture study. So they are, uh, so people right now, it's the um, a, a most success people get a grant is goes through the collaboration. Regardless, it's a, a, in, only in USA or international collaboration. What they're doing is uh, they have their basic research, they have animal study, then they collaborate with uh, a, a, you know, the uh, scientists from other country and also doing the human study. Or they also doing the human study in uh, in, in USA, but because in the past one and a half year, because of COVID, so they all this uh, in, uh, human study stop because you cannot get the, a, a, you know, the human subject to, uh, to uh, come here. You know, you, 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 you uh, uh, draw the blood or, you know, you, 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 you center basically shut down, you know. So that's the delay a lot the human study. And also a lot of human study, they, they grant application, they couldn't get it because they still think you cannot really uh, uh, doing this one at this moment. So I think they soon this situation will get improved, you know, because, uh, you know, if COVID-19 can be under control. A, a, and also they, a lot of uh, scientists right now, they try to connect COVID-19 with some uh, disease, such as uh, COVID-19 and cardiovascular disease. Whether or not uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, can will, uh, uh, promote the uh, cardiovascular disease, you know, or 
they can increase the cancer deaths. You know, so so that kind of study they they try to connect uh, uh, this together, and then make the grant application uh, more uh, proud uh, priority. You know, so so that's the uh, uh, that's the situation. That's the situation. But back to your question uh, uh, again, you know, it's if only just the basic research. You know, unless you are very good, you know, you a, a pinpoint mechanism. But most time, they really want to you have a biological, you know, function in the whole body or or or, or in the human. So, thank you so much, Anna. So no more questions. Thank you so much. Pleasure to mine. Yeah, John, it's a pleasure uh, to be here with you. Anna, thank you so much. I really appreciate both of you. Thank I you. Hope we, I hope to give you a hug in person as soon as possible. Will do. <laughs> yes. okay. okay. Okay, Shug. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, it's, it's a really honor to, to have you here with us. Okay. And uh, Thank you for your brilliant presentation. You had a lot of work preparing that. And uh, we really thank you for everything. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for our friendship. Okay. So I hope to see you guys in Boston. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Agradecemos ao palestrante, professor Dr. Shang Dong Wang, pela excelente palestra e por compartilhar conosco seus conhecimentos. Agradecemos também a professora Ana Lúcia dos Anjos Ferreira por fazer essa moderação e conduzir os questionamentos para que pudéssemos esclarecer ainda mais o assunto. Muito obrigada. Faremos uma pequena pausa nesse momento. Vou... Voltaremos em 30 minutos para iniciarmos a apresentação dos cinco melhores trabalhos do evento que concorrerão ao prêmio de melhor trabalho do terceiro encontro.